understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. Yes, I know it's tough out there. I know if you're sick, I know if you're dealing with a health challenge or a loved one is dealing with a health, cha- a health challenge, it can be tough. But we're here to help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We can do this thing together. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear on the program, advertise on the program, or recommend it on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can earn thank you checks helping move the longevity products. They actually move them especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You can uh, earn yourself some money or you can get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you desire to do. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, or you don't want to be dealing with wrinkles, fine lines, if you have acne or a child who has acne, Retinol 5% is the way to go, especially with vitamin C, no preservative, no fragrances, no fillers, no wax, Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about the products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I also have a blog a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Also, my Facebook page, The Truth With Ben. If you head over there and you like the page, you'll get posts. We post on there once a week or so, once every couple of weeks. The Truth With Ben, that's my my, uh, Truth Facebook page. Okay, so... Welcome back to the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We've been talking about fats and the ketogenic diet and ways to leverage, to exploit, to take advantage of the fatty components of foods, fatty vitamins, phytonutrients, essential fatty acids, how to take advantage of these fatty nutrients for health. And this takes us to the science of emulsifiers and emulsification, which is basically the technique of bringing oil and fats into water and making them water soluble, bring them into the water phase or the water section of a product, making fats watery, making fatty material water soluble material. If you cook a, a fatty piece of meat and at the bottom of the pan you get a bunch of juice with a layer of grease on top and then you add an emulsifying agent or emulsifier chemical, then the fat disappears. Well, it doesn't actually disappear, but it blends into the juice. And this combination of three elements, the juice, the fat, and the emulsifier, is what is called an emulsion. On our last program, we talked about skincare emulsions. These are po- probably the most fundamental of all skincare products are emulsions, basically creams and lotions, which are typically 60 to 90% water with maybe 5 to 20% of an oil phase. So you got an emulsion is a cream or a lotion is an emulsion that's made up of water, 
oil, and an emulsifying agent. Just three things, basically, or three types of things. 60 to 90% water, 5 to 20% oil, and maybe uh, 3 or 4% of an emulsifying agent. If you look at an ingredient deck, and we should all be ingredient deck readers on our foods and on our skin health products, skincare products. You always want to read ingredient decks. If any, you're going to be interfacing or interacting with any products, you'll want to know what you're interacting with. For the life of me, I can't figure out why we don't read ingredient decks. I have some, I have some really smart friends who just think nothing of taking a skin product and rubbing it on their face or rubbing it on their skin. And these are really smart people. They never read the ingredient decks. Oh, but the doctor told me. Oh, but the commercial says. It doesn't matter what the doctor told you. It doesn't matter what the commercial says. It doesn't matter what the celebrity, which celebrity is endorsing the product. It matters what the ingredient deck says. It matters what's, what's on the ingredient deck. And understanding how to read these things is super important. So if you read an ingredient deck, the third or fourth ingredient on most creams and lotions is going to be the emulsifying agent. Things like, you'll see names like cetyl alcohol, steryl alcohol, cetyryl alcohol, glycerol monosterate, sodium lauryl sulfate. Sometimes you'll see something called a PEG, P-E-G. These are all, func- these, all these ingredients function as emulsifying agents. They have one end, like an adapter. They got one end that attaches to oil, another end that attaches to water, and the whole thing gets pulled together by the function, by the activity of this adapter emulsifying agent. But here's the problem. Emulsifiers, emulsifying agents, are active. They're doing something. They're aggressive. They're, act, they're active chemicals. And next to the preservative and maybe the fragrance, the emulsifying agent is the most problematic ingredient in creams and lotions. It's an active ingredient. It's doing something. Not something for your skin, something for the product. And cosmetic chemists have to be very selective about the kinds of emulsifying agents they use because of their potential for irritation. You can think of an emulsifying agent as a detergent. It's not quite as potent as a detergent, but it's along the same lines. If you stuck your hand in a bunch of Tide detergent and left it there for an hour and then pulled your hand out after an hour, it would be pretty irritated. That's what an emulsifier does. Emulsifiers are irritating. The action of pulling oil and water together requires chemistry. And when it comes to the body, and when it comes to the skin, which, you know, it's part of the body, even though we, we sometimes forget that it's a part of the body, you got to be careful with chemistry, particularly non-nutritional chemistry. Emulsion chemistry is very powerful chemistry. In the same way that the oil and water are pulled together in the cream and in the lotion in the same way they're chemically manipulated and the emulsifying agent chemically manipulates the oil and the water, the same thing happens to our skin. That chemical manipulation that's taking place in the cream and the lotion is going to happen on your skin. And just like the oil and water get pulled together in the cream and in the lotion, the oil and water will get pulled together off of your skin. You got oil and water in your skin too. You got natural oil, you got natural water. Skin cells are made up of oil and water. And in the same way that an emulsifying agent will pull together oil and water in the cream or lotion, it'll do the same thing in your skin cells. And you don't want that. That's a disruption in skin chemistry that we don't want. That disruption in skin chemistry, that pulling together of oil and water on the skin, can get perceived as irritation, can get perceived as inflammation. And it's especially problematic for baby skin or for sensitive skin or for delicate skin or fragile skin or damaged skin. In a paper published in the International Journal of Pharmaceutics in February 2000, researchers showed that emulsifiers can cause significant changes in water loss from the skin. And that's a, a classic marker of a skin barrier, na- a skin barrier damage. The problematic nature of emulsifiers is the reason why chemists can only use a tiny amount of emulsifiers, typically less than 3%. Somewhere around three percent, somewhere around between 2 and 4% of a product is going to be the emulsifying agent. And the choice of the emulsifying agent is probably the most important consideration in the creation of creams and lotions. The emulsifying agent has to be strong enough to pull the oil and water together in the product, but not strong enough that it's going to cause irritations. Keep in mind now, we're talking about ingredients that aren't for your skin. They're there for the products. They're there for the economics of the product. Not for us, but for them. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis. We are 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or formulations or anything we're talking about today, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to check out our Truth Treatment products and our Truth Skin Health blog, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any longevity products or join the Bright Side Ben team, love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. You can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head over to our blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com or to brightsideben.com. You can also check out programs, uh, archived programs at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Okay, so progesterone, calming, building, supports testosterone. If you're dealing, if you're thinking about getting on hormone replacement therapy, HRT, if you're a guy, you can either try progesterone first or uh, maybe use progesterone with your testosterone cream. You can have a, uh, uh, your testosterone product. If you use a cream, you can have a compounding pharmacist actually add the progesterone right into the testosterone cream and you can use them both together. Both progesterone and testosterone help balance out some of that excess estrogen that uh, that men tend to produce as they get older this is one of the big problems with men's health as they get older it's not just it's not just unattractive you know it's not just unmasculine it's also unhealthy testosterone is associated with health elevated estrogen is associated with prostate problems in men it's associated with cancer it's associated with alzheimer's uh, disease so balancing out estrogen is not just a cosmetic or superficial kind of thing. It's not just for sex. It's for just overall health. Progesterone and testosterone go hand in hand. In fact, progesterone can actually be thought of as a secondary male sex hormone. Testosterone being your primary male sex hormone. Uh, uh, progesterone can be thought of as a secondary male sex hormone. So that means any feminization issues. And that includes gynecomastia. That means man boobs. Gynecomastia. That's a problem for you. That's a classic sign of too much estrogen. There's actually drugs that can do that because many drugs act like estrogen. Once again, progesterone will balance that out. So if you're thinking about HRT, if somebody's trying to talk you into using testosterone, hormone replacement therapy, which sometimes benefits guys, you might want to think about doing progesterone first or at least, or at least um, uh, using it with your testosterone product. And if you are losing your edge as you get older, I would highly suggest at least progesterone, uh, at least start a progesterone, a progesterone uh, a protocol. Again, you can get the over-the-counter stuff, and that's going to give you a small dose, but I would recommend a compounding pharmacist. And I used to make a 10% product, a 10% progesterone product. Progesterone is really cheap. Don't let any compounding pharmacist take advantage of you either. Progesterone is really cheap stuff. So a 10% product, you know, you should be able to get a month's supply for 50 bucks or 60 bucks, but they do tend to mark these things up. In any case, it could be very, very beneficial. Hey, guess what? Another way that you can uh, lower your uh, estrogen and, and raise your testosterone if you're a guy and you're starting to lose that edge, you're getting some body fat or man boobs, or you're getting weaker, or your sex drive is starting to drop or performance is starting to suffer. Guess what? One of the best ways to boost your testosterone is to fast, is to intermittently fast. Yet another benefit associated with eating less food, with fasting. Intermittent fasting is a great way to build muscle, to build testosterone. And because female hormone is made in visceral fat, the kind of fat that's on our butts and our guts and our hips and our thighs, when you fast, when you do intermittent fasting, in addition to eating less calories, you lose that body fat. Not only will your testosterone go up, but your estrogen will drop. And even better, because intermittent fasting improves insulin sensitivity, your insulin will work, work better. You lose more fat. Your testosterone will work better. All of these are just from intermittently fasting. That's it. That's amazing to me that we can get all of these benefits by not eating once a week or once a month or twice a month or whatever it is. Isn't that, you, come on, that is amazing. You don't need any pills. You don't even need vitamins or supplements. You don't need a doctor's office. It's as simple as not eating. And all the markers of health improve. If you can't fast, do a Swero V cleanse. Swero V is a, a, a electrolyte drink made with fermented uh, whey. 
Jordan Rubin created it. It's a longevity product. If you can't inter- intermittently fast, if you feel like it's too much, do a Swear V cleanse. Half a bottle of Swear V every hour. Do it for two days or three days. If you're a longevity rep, you could build a business just with the Swear V cleanse. That's all you need. If you're a longevity rep and you want to build a business, do uh, do talks, do presentations on the power of intermittent fasting and using the Swear V cleanse. That's all you got to do. Go to your local library or wherever you live. Find a little meeting room. Say, we're going to teach you how to lose weight. We're going to teach you how to be more masculine if you're a man. We're going to teach you how to reduce your risks of cancer and heart disease. And then you do a presentation on the power of fasting and intermittent fasting and uh, the Swear V cleanse. And have some Swear V available for them. That's all you need. You don't need it. Longevity has 4,000 products. Just talk about the Swear V uh, cleanse and intermittent fasting. Eating less and eating too much. The link between eating too much and eating less food and health and disease and hormone health, it's underappreciated, but you cannot possibly talk about it too much if you're interested in in learning about health. Eating and hormones go hand in hand. Eating and health go hand in hand. I'm not a food Nazi here, but as a healthcare professional, I gotta tell you, the less you eat, the better your hormones are gonna be. The less you eat, the longer you live. The more fat a guy is carrying, the more feminine he is becoming. When we lose body fat, that reverses. Sometimes significantly, according to a 1988 article, this is from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, weight loss in obese men was associated with a nearly 60% increase in male hormone, in testosterone. So if you're a guy, and, and this, by the way, starts scarily early, this drop in male hormone and increase in body fat and, and changes uh, and uh, redirecting our body's biochemistry to the hormone of age, hormones of aging and of, uh, of domestication and away from the hormones of youth and, f- and fertility and, and, and vibrancy starts at age 30 or even before for some, po- for some folks. If you're starting to notice some belly fat, you're not quite as energetic as you used to be, you're not quite as resilient as you used to be, you're, not, you're still going to the gym, but you're not building as much, the chance, and I don't care how old you are, you could be 30, the chances are really good that you're starting to become feminized. And uh, plastics and pesticides and many of the chemicals that are in our water and in our air exacerbate the problem. And this, uh, the reliance that we have on sugar makes it even worse. In fact, I would present that that's one of the reasons why sugar is everywhere. Why would it be that the government subsidizes sugar and you can get sugar for $1.50 a pound and the price never goes up? We're domesticated with sugar. We're domesticated with, with sweets. And that includes all sweets, by the way. Corn syrup and, and, and stevia. Stevia is obviously a little bit better. But still, the sweet taste calms us down. It domesticates us. I don't say calms us down. It, it makes us lose our edge. The modified ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, resistance training, and that includes intensity training. Between those three elements, intermittent fasting, the modified ketogenic diet, which is a low-carb diet, low-carb, high-fat diet, and resistance and high-intensity training, most people can lose significant amounts of body fat. Most men can become more masculinized. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We're coming back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, business, formulations, ingredients, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you'd like to join the Brightside Ben team and make some money selling longevity products or get your products at the wholesale price, call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a moment from the journal Neurology. Older Americans who engage in strenuous exercise are more mentally nimble, have better memory function, and process information more speedily than do their more sedentary peers. This is from the journal Neurology, dated March 24th. 
And as they continued to become more physically active, they lost less ground cognitively than did couch potatoes. That means moving your body. Why would this be? Why would it be that moving your body would make your mind work better? Well, because of these hormones. When the body is moved, when we move our body, especially if we're doing something high intensity, the body gets these signals that it's supposed to grow that it's supposed to improve vascularity, that the blood vessel growth is supposed to improve it, and uh, bone and muscle development, uh, that bone and muscle development are supposed to be upregulated, and that brain health is supposed to improve as well. Everything is stimulated by intensity training and resistance training. Now, the rest period is key. You can overtrain, of course, but a little intensity, high intensity training, getting on the treadmill for a minute. People say, oh, I don't have time to exercise. You know what? All you need is a minute. You need 60 seconds a day, that's it, to exercise correctly. High intensity training, you just gotta, and what's high intensity? Well, it depends on you. It depends on the person. What's high intensity for somebody who's 70 years old is not high intensity for somebody who's 30. So you do high intensity for yourself. Instead of, inst I go to the gym and I see these people on the bike and on the treadmill and they're like taking a nice little stroll on the treadmill or they're going for a nice little, uh, you know, a comfortable, comfortable ride on the bike and they're working out for an hour. You don't need to work out for an hour. Just do it as fast as you can for six, 60 seconds. And you know what's going to happen? After a week or two weeks or three weeks, you're going to be doing more and more and more because the body gets stronger. That's how it works. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Shane in Illinois. Welcome to the Bright Side, Shane. Good morning, Ben, and good morning to everybody out there in Bright Side land. All right. Good morning. Thank you. What's going on, man? So, yes, I appreciate and I'm very grateful to all the information that you had given me yesterday. Um, I am doing all the longevity products, but I wasn't able to get to the heart of the matter yesterday. And if I could have 30 seconds, could I get it out? You can get it out, and I won't interrupt, I promise. Cool beans. Thank you. Ben. All right, so the deal is upper palate on the right. I have a wisdom tooth that's impacted. Yes, it should have been taken out 30 years ago. It wasn't. So now, and I know I only have one up there. I'm a lucky person, and I have two. So anyway, it grew a cyst. And the cyst pushed the sinus bone up into my sinus cavity. Oh, so what, he, what he's telling me now is I need to, of course, have the wisdom teeth removed. He's going to go in there, clean the cyst out, which should be benign. He says almost all the time it is. And then he needs, he says, he needs to pull, take that bone out that pushed into my cavity oh, and geez. put a patch in there. And now I asked him, and this is my big problem with him, I says, well, won't the bone just go back the way it was? And this is where he's uh, ramming me and I don't like it because he's threatening me and scaring me saying, oh no, at your age, the bone will not grow back and you need to have this done now because it's, you know, it, it's going to go to your brain or something. And like I say, I, I really appreciate and understand all of your knowledge and the good doc's knowledge been doing all of these things. And like I say, and then the next thing is that he offers me three different ways to patch it up. He says a cadaver bone which I want nothing to do with because I don't know what any of others' energies are. And then he says, like, a bovine kind of a thing or a yeah. seashell feel. So now, what would you suggest? The seashell is the most benign. But, but here's the deal, though. Here's the, this, They're all calcium carbonate and various forms of calcium. So, But here's the thing. I, I don't know how progressed you are. I know that you don't want to mess around with your mouth. I could tell you that for sure. The, the right. proximity of the mouth to the blood, it, 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 a lot of people think heart disease is linked to mouth problems and not to mention the pain that you're going to deal with. So you, you don't want to mess around with the mouth. That's for sure. I don't know how progressed you are, but what I can tell you is that your major strategies for dealing with this thing are going to be keeping inflammation down and accelerating anabolism or building. You can't accelerate anabolism or building locally. You, you follow me, Shane? You can't do it just in the bone you, or just in the mouth. You have to do it throughout the body. So the strategies that you will use for building bone are not, they're not mouth strategies. They're systemic strategies. They involve the whole system, not just the mouth. You follow me? It involves turning your body from the breakdown direction to the building direction. Now, you said you're in your 50s, I think, as I recall. Is that correct? I'm 47. Okay, you're 47. So chances are pretty good that you're heading in the breakdown direction if you're doing the standard American stuff. and It's a good chance. So my recommendation to you... <coughs> 
is not going to be to deal with this specific problem because I don't know the detail. I don't know the, how, how broken down you are. But I can tell you that your number one goal should be to figure out how to keep inflammation down and to turn on anabolism, which is the word for building. And that's everything we've been talking about here. You follow me? It's not so much targeting just the tooth because I'm not there. I can't see what's going on. I can only tell you I wouldn't be messing around with it. But what I, what I can direct you is in keeping inflammation down. That means digestive health, keeping your blood sugar down, oxygenation, all the things we always talk about. And turning on building testosterone, progesterone, uh, intermittent fasting, uh, everything I just talked about, relaxing the body. Now, specifically for uh, post-healing, there's a lot of things you could do nutritionally for post-healing. I'd be pounding uh, if you decide to go with the, the surgery, and you very, mo- very well may need to. I, I don't know the details of it, but if you decide to go through it, digestive enzymes pre- and post-surgical procedure can keep the inflammation down and speed healing. Vitamin E is a major healing vitamin, and it works, that's how we, you know, it works with the ketogenic diet. It's part of what we've been talking about. Uh, 400 international units a day. Zinc is a major healing mineral, and most people are deficient in zinc, especially as we get older and especially the more sugar we eat. Uh, 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Make sure you're doing your ultimate EFAs. They are the molecules of inflammation and anti-inflammation. So using nine capsules a day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night, along with vitamin A as well as zinc. Vitamin A, zinc, and EFAs all go together, and they all require a a, a fully functioning fat absorption system, fat digestive system. So using digestive uh, uh, digestive enzymes with your meals in addition to on an empty stomach, as well as probiotics good bacteria, making sure you're absorbing your minerals out of the gut using apple cider vinegar, maybe some betaine HCL. Do you hear how these are generic strategies? They're not specifically targeted for the tooth because you very well may need to take that thing out. But these are all strategies that you want to do anyway for anti-aging at the age of 47 and also to accelerate the healing after your surgery. I hope I helped you, Shane. I, I know I think you wanted more, more specific information, but I can't give that to you. But I can, from a generic sense, that can help you out a lot. And don't forget vitamin C. Amazing, amazing, amazing for healing. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate your call, buddy. All right. We'll uh, we'll take a quick break and come back with more of your phone calls right after this. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this commercial break. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the Journal of Clinical Investigation, pro, I love this, man. Probiotics stop bone loss, uh, menopause-like bone loss. Probiotic supplements protected female mice from the loss of bone density that occurs after having their ovaries removed. Probiotics, good bacteria. Why would that be? Well, if you've been listening to this program, you know that probiotics and good bacteria are important for fats, and fats are important for calcium and vitamin K. According to the article, I love this, the immune system was known to be involved in postmenopausal osteoporosis. That's according to Emory and Georgia State researchers. Did you hear that? The immune system was involved, uh, was known to be involved in postmenopausal osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is an immune problem. It's an inflammatory problem. It is not a reason to be drugged. Researchers say loss of estrogen that occurs when women get older increases gut permeability. That means leaky gut. That means stuff gets into the blood. That activates the immune system. This is all the stuff we talk about every day on this program. You know, I just I like reading this stuff, but you don't need to read this stuff. You know, it's just logic. Stuff gets into the blood, we get sick. Stuff gets into the blood through the digestive system. When that happens, not only do we get sick, but we age. So what does that mean? It means work on the gut. And one of the easiest ways to work on the gut is to get on the nightly essence, the ultimate nightly essence from longevity, made with multiple strains of bacteria, lots of them, and on top of all that, digestive enzymes. When was the last time somebody got a prescription for the nightly essence for their osteoporosis? Tell that to Sally Field when she tells you to take Boniva or anybody who suggests Fosamax, which, by the way, are among the worst drugs known to man. They're right up there with prednisone. The bisphosphonate drugs that they give you for osteoporosis. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Spanky in Florida. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, my man? Oh, I've got a couple questions. Uh, one uh, pertains to the Bergamax. I always oh, read yeah. the labels and stuff. 
Okay. And it says, I think from on the Bergman says for metabolic syndrome. Correct yes, me sir. if I'm wrong. Is is does that pertain to diabetes? And yes. if you don't have diabetes, can you still take the Bergman? Yes. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. Well, hang on, though. You raised a couple really interesting points. Okay, so first of all, let's tell everybody about metabolic syndrome, which I'm, that's cool that you knew about that. Metabolic syndrome, I love the term. <clears throat> Excuse me. Metabolism is basically all your chemistry. So metabolic syndrome is a fancy-schmancy term that means your chemistry is jacked up. And that means that you got messed up blood pressure, messed up cardiovascular health, messed up kidneys, possibly Alzheimer's disease, possibly osteoporosis. Remember, the messed up blood sugar is the second point on the triangle of disease. It follows a messed up digestive system. So pretty much anything can happen when you have a messed up blood sugar system. And it doesn't have to be diabetes, which is your second point, Spanky. It doesn't have to be diabetes. The diagnosis of diabetes is arbitrary. It is just picked out of a hat. Not quite as bad, but it's based on statistics and numbers, and then they guess. So you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic to be suffering from what's called blood dysgrasias or messed up blood sugar dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. It's on a continuum. It's not like there's a cutoff point for diabetics. So pretty much everybody can rest assured after the age of about 35 or 40, they're on that somewhere heading towards diabetes. They call it pre-diabetes. You know, technically, one out of three Americans are either pre-diabetic or diabetic. So the point I'm making is everybody benefits by strategies that lower blood, or lower blood sugar and strengthen insulin, which are, is pretty much every single thing we talk about on this program. The Bergamax is made with flavonoids from, from Bergamot. I haven't talked about it for a while. How did you hear did you hear about it on this program, Spanky? Uh, yeah, I heard uh, the one doctor that you had on there, I think, last week. And and then I said, well, I'll go ahead and get it. And uh, like I say, I always read the labels. You, know, and that's you don't like have to have... You're going to... You're going to have multiple benefits from that. You'll have mul and pregnenolone too, by the way, does the same thing. Pregnenolone and and I have I got a lot of letter or a lot of phone calls from people who can't pronounce it. So let me just go over that real quick. Not for you, Spanky, but for other folks. Preg, as in pregnancy. Preg, nen, like Ben, except nen. Preg nen, and then alone. Preg nen alone. Just so if you're out there listening, so you know, don't sound silly when you talk to somebody about it. Preg nen alone. Not talking about you, Spanky. It works. Pregnenolone. Pregnenolone works for metabolic syndrome as well. Absolutely. These are all, everything good for you will work for metabolic syndrome. The Bergamax in particular is made with uh, the Bergamot fruit, but it's made with a special process. The Bergamax people are from the University of uh, Calibria in Italy, I think it is, and they, they are Bergamot specialists. They, they're the, the formulators of the Bergamax product. This is why I put it on my website, brightsidehealthproducts.com, by the way, brightsidehealthproducts.com. The reason I put it on the website is because I was so impressed by the fact that the people who, who patented and formulated this particular type of bergamot are the ones who are getting funded by the Italian government to do all the studies. They are the bergamot experts, and they came out with a special process for extracting this, uh, uh, the bergamot, uh, part of the bergamot that's got the, uh, the active ingredients and the, the products on the website, uh, brightsidehealthproducts.com. And people are lose, not only uh, losing weight and not only improving uh, the markers of metabolic syndrome, but feeling better. And that's the bottom line is people feel better on the uh, have you started taking it yet? No, I, I, that, that's why I haven't taken it yet because I said, well, let me Take it. ask. I, Take I, it. I always want to ask. And then on the pregnenolone, I, I always go to my local health food store and I ask them, I said, where's your pregnenolone? They said, right here. And I said, well, let me read the label. So I'm reading okay. the label. I said, men who have enlarged prostate should not. I said, oh, wait a minute. Ah, no, it. not buying it. Uh, you know, that's that's legal okay. mumbo jumbo. They got to put that there. They just got to put that okay. there. No, it doesn't. No, pregnenolone is not going to affect your prostate. It's extremely benign and extremely mild. Pregnenolone itself, it, pregnenolone, it, it, that's uh, highly, almost impossible. I mean, I don't want to say impossible. Nothing's impossible, but very, very unlikely. And considering all the benefits you get, French fries will enlarge your prostate more than the pregnenolone. Way more. I believe that. Um, yeah, that's really the problem. Yeah, yeah, may absolutely. I ask, may I ask you one more question? Sure. Um, sunscreen. When I read yeah. the labels, I was like, I don't want to put that garbage on. You don't. Me. You're ab Spanky, yeah. you are a smart man. Are you a health? Are you in the health business at all, or what's the deal? How do you know so much stuff? No, I, I, when I was young and stuff, I was always into training and working okay. out. Good. Reading the Good. health stuff, and my grandpa's 
probably the one who got me started on it. And uh, and I'm always reading, you know, on the vitamins, and minerals, and always and reading. Stuff like Good for always you. Always reading. Good for you, man. Yeah. Now here's the deal on sunscreens. They are nasty. Now sunscreens are not sun blocks. There's a distinction. Sun blocks are like painting your skin. Uh, zinc oxide is the most important one and the best one because you're getting zinc and it's actually healing for the skin. But they also make something called titanium dioxide. Both of these are pigments. Like paint is a pigment. These substances are pigments and they, they don't literally paint the skin, but they have the same kind of effect. And the sun rays bounce off the paint or bounce off the pigment. These are these are neutral. They're not chemically active or at least nowhere near as chemically active as sunscreens. Sunscreens go by the name octomethoxycinamate. Sometimes you'll see synoxate instead of that term. Sometimes you'll see something called octocrylene. Sometimes you'll see avobenzone. Sometimes you'll see oxybenzone. These are nasty chemicals. And when I used to make, and I used to have to do it in my pharmacy because I get scripts for them, I would wear a mask when I had to dip my hand in this stuff because the stuff is so darn toxic. So to rub it on your skin or even worse on a child's skin or the baby's skin is highly unadvisable. And as far as estrogen goes, guess what? They're very estrogenic. They're very domesticating. They'll shut down, test, they'll uh, antagonize testosterone, and they'll, they'll make you run high risk for estrogenic cancers and other diseases. So I would be staying far away from them. You don't want to burn, though. That's for sure. So if you have to wear a sun, sunscreen, wear it, but get it off as soon as possible. Hey, Spanky, I want to get one more call in, buddy, but that was a great okay. call. Appreciate, right, appreciate it. it. Take care, man. Hey, Carl, the truth raider, you get the last word, but we only got about a minute. So Good what's morning. going Once on? again, Ben. Hey, yes. the, the uh, earlier call there about, uh, about dental, I guess this seems to be the meme today. Uh, dental problems and ear, nose, and throat problems and difficulties. Yeah. Well, my problem is not nearly as bad as uh, the, the gentleman there that has a great radio That was voice. pretty I bad. Yeah. yeah, that's bad. Hey, the simple thing here. I had a good steak dinner, and then I got a, a, a piece caught in my throat. Okay, and I almost choked. I got it. I got it out. I was lucky. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to have an emergency there, but I got it out. And then during the night, I, I thought another piece got lodged into my uh, what, what you call the nodule, the um, on the left side tonsil and adenoid area, no, right there on the left side. That's part of your. That's part of the circulatory system. That's part of the lymph. Yeah. That's not, and how do I get that out? Because I have a stone in there now, and it's painful. Uh huh. You got. I wish you had more time. You got to move the lymph. That's a sign the lymphatic system is starting to stagnate and get pulled with, get filled with. Toxicity. So okay. you got to move the lymph. Like a rebounder, stay away from any problem foods, everything we really talk about, Truth Raider. Hey, we'll call tomorrow. I'll get you first up, okay? And we'll okay. talk about that. It's a good subject. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Have an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.